Hi, this is Lori, and welcome to my series on the Pico W. In this two-part series, we're going to use a rotary encoder as our input device to play Hangman using our Pico W. This first part will focus on learning about rotary encoders and how to use them and kind of get the display set up to play uh, Hangman. We're going to use um, the SSD 1306 OLED display that we've used in some other projects. Uh, it's a fun little display and um, when I started to think about making a Hangman game and I thought about what display we would use, I really liked the challenge of seeing if we could fit Hangman on one of those very small 1306 displays. Let's get going. So it always helps to start with the end in mind. So we're going to demo the program that we'll have at the end of these two episodes and putting together the hangman with our rotary encoder. So I have the whole final setup here. This is the rotary encoder and our display and our Pico and everything's hooked up. So I'm going to run the program from Thawney. There we go. We got the initial screen uh, here. So we can see the hangman's uh, gallows. We can see all the letters of the alphabet that are available to choose from. We'll also see this little square. That's the area where we'll select letters. And the number of misses is shown as well. How many misses have we uh, had so far? And if I turn the rotary encoder, you can see the letters uh, moving up and down. And you'll notice that we can go back and forth. So if I get up to uh, get up to Z, you can see that after Z, if I just keep going, it rotates through. So it just kind of has the letters kind of rotating through, which I think is a very natural way to select letters, which is why I kind of thought this would be a fun project to do with the rotary encoder. So now we can take a letter and we'll select it. So uh, we missed one already, and you can see that uh, H, H uh, left the list of available letters. Now if I choose H again, it'll just tell me at the top, it says that's a repeat. And then it'll uh, pause just for a second and then tell me that I have one misses again. So um, that's something that could be improved in this program, is setting it up so that the letters don't show anymore um, if they've already been selected. But the program was getting kind of complicated already, so I'm just going to kind of randomly pick some letters here. And you can see uh, we're having a lot of misses, and uh, so we now have... Uh, oh, and we missed it. It said sorry. That means we, we didn't win the game, and you could see that the line was the, the word that we were supposed to guess. And then it, it restarts again. And if we press Control C, as always, we'll end the game and clear everything out. So that's the kind of program we'll have at the end of these two episodes. Now that we know where we're going, let's talk about the rotary encoder itself. The one I have is KY040, and it's a uh, a rotary encoder that's already been mounted onto a breakout board to make it a little easier to use. It has uh, five pins, ground, uh, power, there's a switch as you saw when I was demoing it. When I press in, that's how I selected the particular letter that was showing on the screen. So a little button switch there, and then two pins, the clock and the DT, but I've seen in a lot of places where you read about a rotary encoders, people call these the A and B pins um, of the rotary encoder. Now, a rotary encoder generates a pulse as it's being rotated, and we use that. It generates pulses out of both the output A and the output B pins, and the order in which those pulses happen tells us how far the rotary encoder is turned, and as well, in what uh, direction it's been turned. It'll rotate infinitely in both directions, unlike potentiometers that we've used in the past that have kind of a lower end and an upper end. We can rotate it around and around and around. Most encoders also have uh, little um, indentions uh, that you can feel as you turn it, 
and it gives a little feedback about you've moved an increment. In the case of the one that I'm using in this project, it has 30 uh, uh, little notches uh, for the full circle. And you can look at the back of my particular one. You'll notice that there's some resistors already put on here for the uh, two pins, uh, the clock and the DT pin. And those are used to pull those pins high um, whenever they're not connected to ground. And then when it does connect to ground as it's being rotated around, it will produce a low signal. And we'll be able to read these highs and lows from the GPIO pins on our Pico so that we can, again, tell how far it's been turned and in what direction. We'll talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. Now, so the back you can see, but you'll also notice that there's, looks like there's a missing resistor back here, and that's actually for the, for the switch. Um, they chose in this module not to put on a, a resistor, so I'll need to put an internal pull-up resistor into my code to use the switch. So just a little bit more about how the encoder works. There's sort of a disk inside of the um, encoder, and as it comes into contact with the A and B output pins, it connects to ground, and you can see as you're rotating, you're going to hit one of those two uh, first, and they'll be slightly shifted from each other, and we can tell which one ends up low first will tell us which way that disk was turning. And uh, so there's some nice little uh, uh, diagrams of, of how this works uh, that I got from components101.com. So yeah, so as we uh, connect in with the ground pin and rotate that knob, that disk moves around, it's going to hit one of those two pins first and create these little square waves of lows and highs. And by counting the number of squares we have and which one happened first, we'll know which direction the uh, rotary encoder was turned. Well, the circuit we'll use for the whole project, you can see the rotary encoder up here. Here's our Pico. Here's the OLED screen that we've hooked up several times before. Um, so we'll focus on the rotary encoder. Here we're going to connect it into ground and power. Then this uh, one in the middle is the switch button, so we'll connect that up to GPIO pin. And then the clock and DT that output A and B pins will connect into two other GPIO pins on our Pico. And then as you can see, the OLED screen will have that uh, ground power and two pins to uh, send uh, stuff to that using I squared C. So to use our rotary encoder, we'll need some libraries uh, to operate it. Some people have already done the coding to read those uh, output A and output B, determine how many on and offs we have for each one, and in which order to tell which way we've rotated. Uh, people have already written some of that code up, so I decided to use um, one from Mike Teachman. This is not in Thonny, um, so you'll have to go to his site, and I'll provide a link in the description to get it. And you can download the Rotary Pi, and then we'll need the Rotary IRQ RP2 files to put on our Pico so that we can use Mike Teachman's library. Here's the basic program I'll use to read our Rotary encoder. We'll import uh, from uTime couple of functions we'll need. Then uh, we'll import the library that we just discussed. And we'll set up our rotary encoder. And we'll use the rotary IRQ. And we'll tell it which pins the clock and DT are connected to on our Pico. I have a little sleep in here to allow it to kind of settle. Then we'll initialize value old to the current value that we're reading from the rotary encoder. And in our while true loop, we'll read the encoder again, and I'll sign that to val new. And if val old doesn't equal val new, then that means we've moved the encoder, and we'll make val old equal to val new, and we'll print that to the screen and keep looping. 
let's go ahead and watch that go. All right, so I'm going to do a little turning here. You can see we're going up. And then I can go down. And you can see it goes negative. And it'll just keep going. And then you can go right on back. Um, so yeah, and I just go round and round and round many times as I want. Now we'll add to our basic program using the button. So we'll need to add the machine uh, library and import pin. We'll set up our encoder as we did before. Now we'll need to set up the button. I happen to have it connected on 11. And here's the pull up resistor that we'll use. Um, with buttons, I find that interrupt functions are uh, the best way to go, and I've discussed this in previous episodes. I'll link uh, the episode where I describe interrupt functions in detail and how they work, but we'll need to write our interrupt function, and I typically write interrupt functions that only return a flag uh, variable back just saying the button has been pressed. All this code in here checks to make sure we're not reacting to noise in our button, that we really have a true press. We'll send back the interrupt flag equal to one when that's the case. We'll initialize our interrupt request, and we'll use our button handler uh, function that we wrote, select letter, and we'll initialize the interrupt flag at zero and the debounce time at zero. Here's our sleep and very similar code to what we had before, except for we're going to check for the button press. So if the interrupt flag does equal one, that means the button has truly been pressed. We'll turn it back off again and print to the screen button pressed. And the rest of the code will run that's going to print the value to the screen. So let's check and see if we've got our button set up right. All right, so I'm going to do some rotating here. And I'm going to press the button. Okay, that worked. Now let's rotate a little bit more and press the button. All right, I think we've got it working and connected all correctly. Now it's time to see how we're going to fit the hangman game onto the screen. And actually, this was actually the very first program I wrote because I wasn't sure that I could get every piece of needed information on the teeny 1306 display. And just going to use the display, uh, bring it in, import the modules that we'll need for it, set up the I squared C uh, bus and the display, and then I'm just going to try to put everything on. So there was a lot of trial and error that you're not seeing. You're seeing the final code of everything that fit. So a game title, then this is the letters that haven't been used area. Made sure I could fit all those letters on there. Then I wanted to create that area where we'll select the letter that we're going to be rotating through with our encoder. So this is the code that created that little rectangle and put a letter on there to see if it would all fit. Then I uh, wanted to see how big a word could I put on there. It turned out I could get up to eight letter words. So just a little bit of text here. And then we'll need blanks because we won't have letters there to show the user how many letters there are in the word they need to guess. We'll also need to give some feedback about how many misses they've had so far so they know um, how desperate the situation is. And then uh, let's start drawing the uh, gallows for the hangman. So these are the parts that will be always on the screen. So the vertical bar, the horizontal bar, the little crossbar, the rope, and the ground. Those always appear, and we won't have to keep rewriting them to the screen. And then the hangman parts, the head, the body, the arms, the legs. And I decided if it was a really long word, maybe people would want hands and foot um, to give you some more guesses. So that gets you up to 10 different body parts um, to uh, be able to show. So we'll go ahead and run this and see how it looks on the display. There we go. So yeah, it all fits and you can see um, the little feet and so forth on here and the letters, the letter select area, number misses, it all fits pretty tight and it's a really small display. I have to get pretty close to it to look at it, but uh, I think it's kind of fun that we can get all of this game onto the little display that we have. Here's the code that we'll use to use our encoder to select letters from the alphabet using the button. 
and uh, put that onto our display. So we have everything to import, uh, all of it, the, the things for the display, things for the encoder, um, set up the display, and now as we set up our encoder we're going to need to use some of the optional parameters in the rotary IRQ function. We'll need to tell it that we want to give values between 1 and 26 as we rotate through so that we can uh, connect that up with letters in the alphabet. Then I found to make it move one letter uh, each time you felt a detent, it had to have half step equals true, and I had to turn reverse equals true on as well to make it work correctly. And then we'll need to change the range mode to the wrap so that it wraps around the 1 through 26. So when we get to 26, it's going to go back to 1, and if we're at 1 and we want to go backwards, it'll go to 26. So that's the wrap function there. Then we'll set up our button and the interrupt uh, function and request. And here's our dictionary of the letters so we can connect the rotary value 1 through 26 to a letter. We'll initialize the value old to the current value of the uh, encoder. We'll send to the screen that little area where we'll select the letters. We'll start it off with A and then we'll go into our while true loop. We'll read the encoder. We'll check to see if there's been a button press and uh, if there has we'll print to the screen the letter selected is. Then uh, we'll check to see if val old is not equal to val new meaning we've had movement if we have had movement, then we'll um, need to clear out the previous letter. So this rectangle will just fill the area that that letter was in and make it black. Put that to the screen. We'll print to the uh, shell the information of what result we had and what letter we're picking up, just for debugging purposes. And then we'll send the letter uh, to the OLED screen using our letters get and show all that, sleep a little bit and loop around as the person uses the encoder. So let's go ahead and run it. There we go. And so we have our little select uh, area on our screen and I'm going to rotate it a little bit and you can see and as I rotate it it's also showing up in the um, shell and uh, so let's try selecting one. So we selected M and that's what was on the screen. So that seems to be working. Let's just select a couple more. There we go. Looks like we have it working. Well, that's uh, a lot to uh, get through and uh, now we're in a good place to finish out this Hangman program in part two. I hope you'll join me Thanks for watching.